Okay, so um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, distinguished partners, and dear colleagues, I'm extremely honored to welcome all of you to this wonderful event today, which is designed to share experiences, lessons learned, and also celebrate the impressive accomplishments of this great project that um, has been running since 2017, um, funded by USAID and implemented in partnership with Worldfish and the government of Odisha and several other um, actors at the local level. Under this project, the partners have undertaken a number of successful initiatives to scale up nutrition sensitive and innovative aquatic food systems technologies through innovative partnerships in Odisha, India. My name is Tana Lala Pritchard. I'm the Executive Director for Strategy, Innovation and Communications at Worldfish, and I will be moderating today's event. Before we get started, please allow me to direct your attention to some housekeeping rules that are now showing on your screens. For non-speaking participants, your cameras and microphones will be uh, switched off by default. We kindly ask that you keep this switched off at all times to avoid um, disrupting the speakers during the workshop. To keep the workshop as engaging as possible, I would welcome you to send comments via the comments box or even raise questions. And um, I'll encourage us, our speakers and panelists to um, engage with you directly. This workshop is being recorded and screenshots will be taken for learning purposes only and the recording will not be shared externally. So let me uh, not waste any more time but uh, kick off um, the workshop uh, by handing it over to Ms. Ramuna al Hanzui, the USAID's Mission Director um, in India, to deliver um, opening remarks. Over to you, Ramuna. Thank you very much, Tana. I greatly appreciate the, the overview and uh, the introduction. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much. It really is a pleasure to join everyone here today. I do recognize that I'm greeting you during very troubling times for India and globally. And I really hope that everyone is staying safe, taking care of yourselves, your families, your teams. So during this difficult time, USAID stands with all of our partners and our colleagues across India and the region. And your safety and well-being is of primary concern as we all work to get through this difficult time together with resilience and resolve. Our resilience and our willpower to manage through crises gets a major boost when we're able to share good stories once in a while. So when Vamsi from the USAID India team asked me to participate in today's workshop, I was really thrilled to get back in touch with the Odisha World Fish activity. Access to affordable, nutritious diets for all is really a major challenge. And as you all know, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number two focuses on this fact and ends to aim end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. The goal acknowledges that efforts to combat hunger and malnutrition have advanced significantly since 2000. However, ending hunger, food security, and malnutrition require continued and focused efforts. USAID's work with partners in India, such as World Fish, to help increase the availability of nutritious food has been really one of our strongest success stories in recent times. And I'm pleased that our pilot interventions in the rural backyards of Odisha have produced such strong results across the state. In 2017, when World Fish first approached us, the original proposal looked at focusing on improved fish production in Odisha. And together we designed a multidisciplinary project to accomplish nutritional goals through fisheries interventions. During this co-design process, we agreed to use the huge potential of home ponds across the water-rich state of Odisha to adapt and demonstrate proven nutrition-sensitive fisheries technologies and approaches and scale them to benefit a larger number of people through partnerships with the Odisha government and the private sector. Based on the scientific principles, the USAID World Fish Project in over three years has helped over 800 rural families produce highly nutritious fish species in their home ponds and supported 20 women's groups in leased community ponds. The project has enabled these poor families to eat fish 
daily instead of once a month. And the project also assisted women's self-health groups to hygienically dry homegrown fish using low-cost solar dryers and to package and sell in their local markets. So this, through this indigenous production, higher fish consumption and better sales, the project has really played a key role in improving not just nutrition levels, but household incomes and the local economy as well. And just one year after the launch, the Odisha state government allocated $4.5 million to expand the project from our pilot level of just three districts to 30 districts. And building on this last year, the state government also allocated an additional $2 million to include even more families. I was really pleased to participate in last year's MOU signing between Odisha's Women and Child Development Department and World Fish to introduce the hygienically solar dried fish in Anganwandi centers. So making this nutritious food source available to even more marginalized families. And due to the state government's expansion efforts, more than 60,000 women and their families have benefited so far. Dr. Johnstone, I'd like to congratulate the World Fish leadership and the excellent project team based in Odisha for the successful efforts throughout this project. You've made these successes possible and persevered through the complicated and difficult times of the pandemic. And I also want to acknowledge your engagement with the private sector throughout project implementation and also working to scale up through CSR, the Corporate Social Responsibility Funds available in India. And I hope these efforts continue much after USAID's partnership in this program has ended. I'd also like to commend the Odisha government's energetic and visionary leadership and your commitment to improve people's welfare. I know that the project's accomplishments were made possible thanks to the support of the Fisheries Department, the Women and Child Development Department, and the Women's Shakti Department. Today's event and this project showcase how our joint efforts on the ground make a difference in people's lives and address the important UN Sustainable De Development Goal to increase sustainable agriculture and reduce hunger. And I'd like to recognize that many women have been empowered by this activity, as evidenced by the, the story of Solochna from the Balasore district. Through this activity, she was able to not only feed her family, but develop technical and leadership skills to help at least 400 additional women achieve their goals. An empowered woman is a sight to behold, and I'm so glad that this project has contributed to that important goal. And I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize another powerful woman amongst us who was recently awarded the 2021 World Food Prize, Dr. Shakuntala Tilsted. I've had the honor to work with you in Bangladesh and here in India. My very heartfelt congratulations on your well-deserved honor. I'd now like to turn things back over to our partner, World Fish, to learn more about the post-project plans. Congratulations to everyone on this very successful program. Thank you and namaste. Thank you so much, Ramona. It is really indeed a, a wonderful day and a wonderful event to sort of celebrate these sort of accomplishments. And so um, inspiring as well to hear of some of the stories that you shared with regards to the outcomes and the accomplishments. And, and again, there is no one better in terms of a tireless advocate than Shakuntala when it comes to the role of fish, nutrition, and aquatic food systems to uh, fulfill the, the goals of the sustainable development agenda in India and in local communities and, and really empower women and, and accomplish all so many things. So it's my distinct privilege um, to introduce you now to Dr. Tilstead, um, the 2021 World Food Prize winner precisely for her work on nutrition, fish and aquatic food systems to share um, some of her insights and perspective with regards to her engagement in this project. Over to you, Shakuntala. Thank you so much, Tanya. And thank you so much, Ramona, for your kind words. Yes, I remember we worked together in, together in, in Bangladesh, and it was also very nice and def, therefore easy for us to work together again in addition. I'd like to talk about the nutrition-sensitive aquatic food systems for nourishing people and planet, and talk about the case for the USAID-funded project, the narrative for food systems across the globe as we begin to realize the fragility of our food systems, 
and the race against time to transform food, land and water systems that are nutrition sensitive and climate resilient. However, we must all understand that holistic food systems transformation cannot occur without taking into consideration the, transform the transformation of aquatic food systems. Approaches not only consider food production systems, but approaches cannot only take into consideration food production systems, because we know as food systems champions, we must move the narrative and we must and we must move the narrative from feeding people towards nourishing healthy people and planet. We must change the narrative from mass production with, staple, with focus on staple foods, in addition, rice, towards one that speaks of quality production, whereby the foods produced are diverse, nutritious, safe, accessible and equitable. And this is what we have been, we are striving to do in this project in Odisha. In Odisha, we use the nutrition sensitive aquatic food systems to maximize the impact of transformation for nutrition and public health. And the way we have done this is we've used the food systems framework as a guiding principle. We influence change along the food systems through many various entry points, homestead pond polyculture, inputs to production, capture of diverse small, small sized fish from marine waters, supply chains, dried small fish, and all the way to increased consumption. We have focused on the poor and vulnerable women and young children in the first 1,000 days of life. We also use the food systems framework to bring in opportunities to influence policy recommendations and investments and build multi-sectoral partnerships with stakeholders, including government departments, such as the Department of Fisheries and the Department of Women and Child Development and Mission Shakti. Also, the private sector, local and international non-governmental organizations, and we've also worked with schools in Odisha. The Odisha project, by using nutrition-sensitive aquatic food systems approach to nourish people and planet, is a powerful example of how we can develop context-specific solutions with multiple benefits ensuring food and nutrition security, increasing income, and improving livelihoods and well-being, and all of this with low environmental costs. These approaches can be scaled for mass impact across other states in India, as well as to other countries in Asia and Africa. Just last night, I had the IFAD country manager of layers asking me to send him the examples that we have from Odisha on nutrition sensitive approaches. This year, 2021, is an important year for our journey in transforming food systems. With a year of shocks and disruption due to COVID-19 and still ravaging India as we speak, we are looking for solutions to build forward better. The UN Food Systems Summit 2021, with its five action tracks, cut across diets, landscape, livelihoods, and climate adaptation, and is leading the way to transform food system. Together with this, we have just entered the new UN decade of ocean science, and we're in the middle of the UN decade of action and nutrition. So we have very good opportunities for us to put the solutions that we have from Odisha into action at both global and national level. Our Odisha project has demonstrated the impact and power of transformation through targeted investments, capacity building, awareness and innovation for aquatic foods to achieve food and nutrition security. 
with COVID-19 still disrupting the lives and livelihoods in India, we can use the power of aquatic foods as superfoods and use this to nourish people, especially the poor and, marginal, and marginalized. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Shakuntala. It's always a pleasure listening to you speak because you have this um, incredible and amazing um, ability to kind of bring us from the field, local level, all the way to sort of the big topics in the global policy arena and sort of really giving us fish for thought, I would say, in terms of how we think about some of the solutions and, and scaling them at, at the different sort of levels to really create this enabling environment for, for this uh, systemic change and transformation of our food systems to happen. So thanks for those very wise insights. Um, I will now go over to Dr. Arun Padiyar, who is the World Fish Aquaculture Scientist and also the manager of the USAID Odisha Project, um, who will give us an overview of the key outcomes and lessons learned from the project during the time of the implementation. Over to you, Arun. Thank you so much, Tana. Good afternoon, everyone. Now I am going to share the experiences and lessons learned from the U.S. state-funded project scaling nutrition-sensitive and innovative fisheries technologies through partnerships in Odisha. Transforming the nutritional scenario in the state is a top priority in the government of Odisha. About 29% of the children below six are malnourished in the state. The government is implementing a massive supplementary nutrition program across the state under the Integrated Child Development Services under the Women and Child Development Department. About 4.24 million beneficiaries, including children below six pregnant and lactating women are covered under this program. The program serves nutritious hot cooked meals to Anganwadi kids and distributes take home rations to the mothers. Also, the government has midday meal scheme for school children. As Dr. Shakuntala Madam has mentioned, fish is very rich in micronutrients. Since most people in Odisha consume fish, much above the national average, increasing fish in the diets of vulnerable population can help in reducing micronutrient deficiencies in the state. Odisha is very rich in fisheries resources. It is the fourth largest fish producer in, the, in India. It has both marine and inland fisheries resources, but they are underutilized at the moment. Fisheries department promotes fish production and marketing in the state. The USA funded project was implemented in for three and a half years from mm -hmm. October 2017 to March 2021. The main objective of this project was to increase the availability, accessibility, and consumption of nutritious small fish among vulnerable communities in Odisha, and to share the experiences and lessons learned from this project to work wider stakeholders across the country and beyond the country. Under this project, we have implemented three major activities in collaboration with Government of Odisha, ICR institutes, and other partners, including NGOs and private sector companies. Nutrition sensitive carpmola polyculture was demonstrated in 789 freshwater backyard tanks managed by individual households and in 22 community tanks managed by women's self help groups in four districts of the state. Demonstration of hygienic solar drying of fish using the low cost ICR SIF designed polyhouse solar dryers is still under progress. 10 women self help groups are participating in this activity in six coastal districts. They are using marine caught small fishes such as anchovies and sardines for solar drying. And the third activity is piloting the inclusion of fish in ICDS supplementary nutrition program. And it is under progress in 50 Anganwadi centers in Mayurbhanj district of the state. Apart from all these activities, we had also cross-cutting activities, capacity building activities was also present. During the implementation of the project, the project management unit 
was housed inside the Department of Fisheries. This physical integration has greatly helped the project to build the rapport with the officials and understand government priorities and programs and to effectively integrate the technologies with the government schemes for upscaling within a short period of time. During the project, a lot of interactions were held between senior government officials and world fish scientists. Here we can see the development commissioner, fisheries secretary and principal secretary, madam, and also the agriculture production commissioner coming to Odisha, I mean, uh, Cambodia to see the world fish activities and also coming to our world fish headquarters in Malaysia for discussions. So that has helped a lot in improving the understanding. Convergence and partnerships were the main mantra for leveraging mutual strengths and for achieving impacts at scale. The interdepartmental convergence program happened with participation of four line departments, namely Fisheries and Animal Resources Development Department, Women and Child Development Department and Mission Shakti Department, Panchayati Raj and Drinking Water Department, Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Department. Also, ICR Central Institute of Fishery Technology Coaching, ICR Central Institute of Freshwater, Inland Freshwater Research, Bharatpur, CJR International Potato Research Center, MS Swaminathan Research Foundation, Chennai, Kalinga Institute of Social Sciences, Bhuvaneshwar, which is feeding 27,000 tribal kids in its school, boarding school in Bhuvaneshwar. Mamta NGO also participated. Then Falcon Marine Exports, one of the largest ex seafood exporters in India, also participated. Then Odisha's Ruchi Food Line Private Limited, which produces spices and condiments and ready to eat foods for local market, also participated in this program. During last three years, the government has upscaled the carp mola polyculture in more than 6,000 gram panchayat tanks managed by women SAGs. The potential is 64,000 tanks which are there in the state and it can be tagged to more than 700,000 women SAGs in the state to get an impact of more than 1,000 1, crore turnover for the women SAGs per year. Long-term leasing policy for fish farming in GP tanks by women SAGs on priority basis was unveiled to facilitate this particular scheme by the government. Every year, 3,000 women SAGs will be covered under this scheme with a spending of $2 million, 15, 000, uh, 15 crore rupees per year, the scheme value under the state plan scheme. Recently, a new state plan scheme for promotion of carp mola polyculture in agriculture farm ponds has been introduced during this year. 10,000 farm ponds will be covered during this year under this particular scheme. Under the new one district, one product ODOP program under the Prime Minister's FME scheme, hygienic solar fish drying by women SAGs is under implementation. This is with MSME department and Mission Shakti department. 50 solar dryers will be installed during this year, which will be operated by women SAGs in coastal areas. Already six districts, this program will be implemented. A big win came to us when the government of Odisha has incorporated fish-based nutrition in its state nutrition strategy, SOPAN. This strategy was released by the Honorable Chief Minister of Odisha, Sri Navin Patnaik Ji, in March 2020. Subsequently, in November 2020, a five-year MOU was signed between World Fish and the Women and Child Development Department to pilot the inclusion of fish in ICDS supplementary nutrition program. Here we can see the hot cooked meals with fish powder being served to Anganwadi kids and also 
dried fish packets distributed to mothers under the take home ration under this pilot program in which which is under implementation in 50 anganwadi centers in kaptipada block of mayurbhanj districts thanks to the district administration and wcd department for all the support given to this pilot program under the theory of change that is that this project has practiced just a few successful demonstrations and pilots conducted under the control of usa project has influenced the government of odisha for massive scaling across the state through new policies and schemes we anticipate further scaling of the nutrition sensitive aquatic food systems across the country through central government schemes world bank assisted projects un agencies such as ifac and also other donors such as giz gates foundation azim premji philanthropic initiatives corporate social responsibility funds etc through this project we have learned five major lessons which can greatly help us in scaling the innovations lesson number 1 to achieve sustained impacts at scale especially in nutrition sensitive approaches bridging science innovations and government development programs is very much essential because the government is the main stakeholder in promotion of nutrition sensitive programs on massive scale in the state lesson number 2 interdepartmental convergence is key to quick and wider scaling it efficiently leverages the government resources and strongly bridges the value chain actors and scheme beneficiaries lesson number 3 seamless integration of world fish project with government of odisha department has led to quick and effective shaping of the government policies and schemes and their implementation in time bound manner lesson number 4 use of external from usa for demonstration and piloting of locally relevant and acceptable technologies has built confidence in the government and unlocked the huge strength of the government for scaling lesson number 5 partnership with national icr institutes cg centers ngos and private sector companies has helped us to quickly develop various fish based products and to design large scale delivery mechanisms for these projects under the government schemes thank you so much over to you tana Thank you so much Arun it's just so wonderful to hear what's been accomplished in you know over 3 years um and and you guys really worked hard to sort of set up the foundations for sustained innovation in fish and aquatic food production but you know we don't want to be the only ones who say that um i i would love to now invite a host of of our implementing partners to actually share their views and experiences and perspectives uh through their engagement in the project and i would like to start with uh, mr agwal who is the director of integrated child development services and social welfare uh, with the government of odisha mr agwal over to you good afternoon all dr john johnston uh, director general of world fish ms ramana mission director of usa hello guests senior functionaries of world fish project partners my colleagues in government of odisha india ladies and gentlemen very good afternoon to all of you i express my sincere thanks for invitation in today's program to present on uh, the odisha story of big partnership with world fish for inclusion of fish in nutrition odisha though uh, is being seen as a poor state uh, but over the years due to uh, continuous positive interventions sustained innovations and continuous monitoring has made substantial progress on the on nutrition fronts this has been uh, uh, appreciated by various uh, national international agencies uh, niti aayog cnns etc as mr arun has already mentioned uh, the stunting though it is 29% in the state but over the years it has reduced from 34.4 uh, in 2014-15 to 29 in 1718 similarly uh, the wasting and underweight rankings are also improved substantially over the years and this has been appreciated by niti aayog ipri 
accountability initiatives and various other agencies. Uh, in order to further improve uh, the nutrition outcomes, the, and, and as I uh, already highlighted that continuous efforts are required. So Odisha, uh, with the direction of its uh, Chief Minister, as, as part of high team mandate, has aimed to transform nutritional status of the state. For that purpose, uh, the state government has recently launched a program called SOPAN, which is basically a new program which focuses on 125 nutritionally challenged crops, which are uh, very hard to reach areas and having a very poor nutrition indicators. So uh, the continuous and uh, uh, continuous efforts and uh, focused uh, uh, intervention through community participation is planned to bring transformation in these pockets. The transfer, the, this scheme also uh, highlights on uh, the focus is on uh, food diversity, and uh, as part of that, we have uh, this uh, joint hands with uh, uh, World Fish to include uh, uh, fish in our uh, nutrition programs. As already uh, highlighted by Mr. Arun, Odisha being a fish-loving state, 95% of its people consume fish, and it being a very um, and, uh, rich in nutrition, uh, various minerals, nutrition are there. So, and, and fish is easily available at a very affordable price. It, it's a very good uh, ecosystem for uh, inclusion of uh, fish in our uh, nutrition programs. And uh, this entire program was, uh, uh, the entire initiative was uh, uh, led by our own uh, DC from ACSR who has uh, visited uh, Cambodia and Malaysia in uh, November 2019 and after that there has been a substantial uh, progress in this front and as part of this we also signed an MOU with uh, qualification November 2020. This this in, uh, this uh, collaboration has already been highlighted that it focuses on uh, improving the nutrition outcomes in the state and also providing business opportunities to the uh, WSSGs. Uh, who are presently managing uh, nutri uh, fisheries tank in the state. So they will, uh, they, it will be a further uh, opportunity for them to process the fish based products in a very uh, in a nutrition sensitive manner and at a very low cost, which will also be beneficial for uh, economically to them and also uh, will uh, positively impact the nutrition uh, of the nutrition level of children and pregnant. So, uh, as part of this uh, collaboration and the pilot project, around 2,000 beneficiaries are supported in 50 uh, Aminwadi centers of urban uh, block, and 10 uh, WSCGs are also being trained for fish processing, basically uh, at, at a small scale and home industry based setup. And um, World Fish is also supporting us on developing eight specific fish based uh, menu for uh, ICDS which is to be uh, given to the children. And uh, as under this program, as uh, uh, Mr. Arun has uh, shown some pictures, uh, the children are uh, enjoying the fish-based uh, food. Uh, and uh, women are given, uh, uh, women are given uh, dry, dry fish in the packets. So basically, uh, the quantity is 40 grams of dry fish is given to uh, these women three, day, three times a week uh, 12, for 12 days. And for children, it is 7 to 8 grams. Five times a day. So this this is uh, as we calculated. This is uh, again like we are providing five eggs a week to our preschool children, and uh, the cost is more or less the same, uh, and uh, but with a higher nutrition uh, value. So uh, we are hopeful that uh, this will be a game changer. Uh, uh, the World Fish is also supporting us in uh, identification of uh, fish and uh, the source of fish, which is presently being. Uh, Source from ICR, CIRP, and also uh, capacity building of various SAGs are being done uh, so that they are competent enough to handle uh, the fish processing business and also provide uh, ready made fish to uh, the children under SNP program. So, uh, basically, uh, we are hopeful that uh, with the uh, after successful completion of this project and uh, uh, the community uh, by and large uh, till now we have a very good uh, positive feedback from the community initially there were some uh, reluctance on the part of children because of uh, taste and all but uh, we made certain changes in the uh, composition and uh, 
the quantity is also uh, reduced. So now, uh, of late, uh, the children are also enjoying uh, the, uh, the fish-based uh, uh, meal. So we are hopeful that after successful completion and uh, uh, with the positive feedback of the community, we'll scale it up across the state, uh, particularly on those 125 hard-to-reach blocks, which is around one-third uh, blocks of the state. Uh, which are having uh, very poor nutrition indicators and uh, uh, which are primarily uh, source of good source of uh, fish uh, the, uh, the, the uh, sweet water fish is also uh, uh, the state government has initiated uh, uh, the process of handing over fisheries tank in different gps to uh, working uh, to the SSGs for their economic empowerment and uh, the process of further scaling it up and uh, making them competent enough for nutrition sensitive fish production and uh, further processing will enhance their uh, the income. So it will be a win-win situation for both uh, people on nutrition front and also for the WSEs on their economic front. Similarly, uh, the creating of awareness in, uh, throughout the community will further uh, help uh, uh, in uh, overall improvement in the nutrition uh, feature of the state. And uh, I'm hopeful that uh, our partnership with Bulkfish uh, will continue uh, in future also and, and uh, will do wonders in, uh, and that will be an example for uh, rest of the world. And the uh, outcome and the result will uh, uh, lead uh, to further scaling up and, and uh, appreciation at uh, uh, the larger level. Uh, with this, I sincerely thank Worldfish USA for the assistance for uh, implementation of this project in the state and uh, expecting a uh, better outcome of this initiative. Uh, with this, I conclude. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Agrawal. Um, I totally agree with you. I think game changer is precisely the right word to use when it comes to describing so many of these um, innovative initiatives that look at multiple entry points of the food system from capacity development, as you mentioned, to women's empowerment, improving sort of um, uh, livelihoods and sort of uh, economic opportunities um, to, you know, production, sustainable production and processing. Um, this is just, uh, I think, also a real testament to the, to the great um, and complex partnerships that have been set up um, in the context of this project. So I would like to sort of move on to our next speaker, speaker, Dr. Jenna, who is the Deputy Director General of the Fishery Science Division for the Indian Council of Agriculture Research, another partner in our project. Over to you, Dr. Jenna. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Good afternoon, everyone. Namaskar. Uh, most respected uh, DG uh, Worldfish, other dignitaries present here in this important meet. Since our officials, participants from India and overseas, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a great pleasure for me, given opportunity by DG Worldfish and organizers for, for sharing my thought. Uh, friends, uh, it is also a rare opportunity for all of us that to listen to uh, two novel, uh, uh, I would say, World Food Prize laureates, Dr. Gupta and Dr. Shakuntala, in this uh, single platform. Uh, my sincere compliments to all the project partners, uh, Department of Fisheries, Government of Orissa, Department of Women and Child Development, uh, World Fish, uh, USA and other organizers uh, who supported this program. Uh, congratulations to all for providing the path that collaborations between the organizations can make the difference uh, with, uh, with several cross learnings. Uh, as uh, Dr. Rorun uh, spoke, it gives me immense pleasure and satisfaction that some of our ICR institutes also could contribute uh, to whatever little they could, CIFRI and CIFT in particular. I am given to understand uh, also by talk from the Dr. Arun that CIFT uh, could uh, help in installation of some polyhouse solar dryers 
in six district coastal districts of Orissa. They could provide some training programs, awareness program to the self help groups, and also transferring the technology to the some of the private manufacturers for polyhouses for that future installation in uh, maybe subsequent years. Uh, the pilot study what has been conceived under the project in providing the hygienically dried fish powder and also dried fish in the components of underprivileged children in Anganwadis uh, as well as for the adolescent girls and pregnant lacking women uh, has been also quite significant. I do understand uh, that uh, whatever necessity for the project the supply has been made by our institute uh, CIFT. Uh, CIFT. Uh, we could provide also some certain training programs on safe fish products for, from small fish. Uh, CIFRI also they could uh, in association with the department fisheries they could assess the primary productivity some of the reservoirs, prepare some co-management plans establishing some cages and installation of pens in some places in uh, some reservoirs in Orissa, organize several training programs uh, as for, the, for the not only stakeholders but also the officials of the department. Uh, I'm given to understand also the institutes uh, in particular could help in organization of several training programs, awareness program in some of the districts on use of uh, fish as a health food and uh, bringing the importance of MOLA as a, a human diet. Uh, friends, all of us who are associated with the fisheries, we take pride to, uh, to say that uh, the country like India has progressed well with maybe uh, about 20 fold increase. That is what we have been talking in last all the time, last 70 years we have done well. Of course, our production has been mainly on the aquaculture, but we could able to sustain the production from capture also uh, in spite of all challenges. Uh, but it is necessary now uh, that we not only give focus on quantity production, that is what has been the focus over the years from aquaculture to the quality and variety, that is what we have been talking at this point of time. In this endeavor, this, our effort has been diversifying the spaces and as on today, probably we have more than 60 species breeding and seed production technology is available. And not that only in the major big spaces, this includes small regionally important spaces like minor calves, maybe small fishes like pavda and so and so forth, uh, that every each one of you are aware. Although the fact that fish uh, is a rich source of protein and nutrients is more or less to everyone, but uh, we need to take this message, uh, the importance of fish as a health food, probably the, the time of the time that we join hands to take this message forward. Somehow we have not been probably able to take this message of richness of fish in terms of availability of amino acids, essential amino acids, whether we talk of lysine or methionine or omega-3 fatty acids like EPA and DHA. Of course, uh, Dr. Shakuntala knows uh, much more than me uh, he, as he has been in this, uh, 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 on this job over these years. Her work in Bangladesh at or plate uh, in other places has been acknowledged also. Our action need to be more forceful and robust definitely in coming days. I may like to bring your attention, uh, attention of everyone about uh, maybe 25 years back, uh, somewhere around 97, 98, uh, the CIFA, uh, the institute which is placed at Bhubaneswar itself, had coined a slogan, fish for health, fish for wealth. Uh, it was coined 25 years back, but probably it is more relevant today, not only today, but also will be relevant tomorrow. We need to take this message forward. Uh, of course, in, uh, to highlight the importance of fish, we uh, undertook a uh, network projects again on nutrient profiling and evaluating fish as a dietary component. We worked for about 10 years uh, in association with about six, seven institutes, and we could profile about more than 100 fish, more precisely about 115 fish species, food fish species, where the information on gross chemical composition, amino acid profile, fatty acid profile, micronutrients, 
etc uh, 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 has been generated and all this uh, are available in the uh, database which is open access i am sure all, all of you must have seen the uh, nutrifish in uh, we have been talking all the time that how fish has been important uh, as a food for uh, diet for maybe maybe more than 3 billion of people in the uh, in the globe uh, we have been talking that uh, maybe 20% or more their animal protein intake is from uh, from fish but when coming to india probably we get whatever the figure we get 8 uh, 7 kilo 8 kg per capita uh, may, may not be that encouraging but when we look at the Uh, maybe food habit of india probably the figure gives a, a little uh, maybe a misnomer rather i would say because we at india if you talk total india per se uh, maybe only 60% of people uh, take fish and that to uh, consumption very again in the region probably our per capita consumption may be 1.5 times more than that whatever we talk and coming to the uh, country uh, not only when i say country it includes orissa also we have set new targets new several new aspirations uh, you know the government of india has already have a new department new ministry with new programs like pmssy with the investment uh, of somewhere around 3 billion us dollar in past next 5 years i think the state like uh, orissa and all will be taking advantage of in this uh, and uh, in this endeavor probably innovations and knowledge based farming sustainable responsible fisheries will be so important Uh, we have been talking as i told quality and variety uh, to be remaining at the center point we need to talk of uh, enhancing the partnership uh, with stakeholders that would be key definitely when i say the partnership it is not only between the institution or organizations but also with the enterprise industry and every stakeholders who has an interest in this uh, sector uh maybe all of you may be knowing that last 3 years we have a good partnership with the world fish initiating programs with cfa cfa and cft on several of the programs whether it is lca studies wetland development and most importantly the program with cft for the again uh, nutrition for the chil uh, children up to 100 days of life with the fish as a important component friends i am optimistic definitely uh we should be able to meet the expectations of uh, everyone government to consumer uh, we like to see uh, that uh, we not only talk uh, that fish for all but we should be talking quality fish for all and quality fish for all not only for today and tomorrow but forever that should be our slogan this would be possible only through collaboration cooperation or convergence uh like uh, the project which you have been uh, operating at this point of time in orissa uh, only i can assure you sirs that uh, we uh, icr institute could be ready to provide any support uh, through uh, through our eight fishery research institute in any such uh, endeavors whatever we are talking of uh, uh, today uh, not only in orissa but also any uh, any other states in the coming days Uh, i don't intend to uh, spill uh, my work uh, my talk more than 5 minutes i think i have already taken 5 minutes thank you so much thank you so much uh, dr tana thank you thank so much thank you so much dr jena i think i'm going to have to steal your uh, motto for quality fish for all <laughs> or maybe we should do a joint campaign together but uh, thanks so much for your really insightful uh, comments and also quite interesting to also learn the work that um, your team has been doing with regards to understanding the nutritional composition of various fish i know this is something that dr shakuntala always kind of talks about in terms of really um, kind of getting to that level of understanding in terms of then shaping innovative products but also um, advice and kind of recommendations for how to tackle um nutrition sensitive approaches so that's that's a really so I, and i can sense there's probably a good project coming up there maybe that we could kind of explore um now let me move on to our next speaker dr morali the executive director for the ms swaminathan research foundation dr morali over to you yeah thank you very much and i'm indeed honored to be a part of this group uh, speaking about 
uh, our uh, association with world fish uh, uh, you know project uh, project closure workshop and also i thank specifically dr vishnu murthy mohan providing this opportunity to speak on this occasion honestly i'm quite honored to be a part of this program and more importantly to share dais with uh, two awardees uh, world food awardees uh, dr shakuntala tatsted and uh, vijaya gupta uh and that also speaks that both are from world fish and therefore the fish have very prominent uh, role to play in uh, nutrition i congratulate uh, dr felstad and uh, i on my behalf as well as uh, from the staff of our foundation and my respects to everybody uh, the dignitaries who are listening to us and uh, watching us and those who are speaking to us Professor Swaminathan introduced farming system for nutrition, uh, what we call as FSN, to be believed as a food-based approach that will address malnutrition in the country, particularly in India. He stated, "I quote: Introduction of agricultural remedies to the nutritional maladies prevailing in an area through mainstreaming nutritional criteria in the selection of the components of farming system involving crops, farm animals, and wherever feasible, fish." this is the quote that i am um, quoting from professor ramanathan so the fsn approach or the food systems for nutrition approach comprises of measures such as advanced crop production practices bio fortification promotion of kitchen gardens fruits and vegetables livestock and poultry development and setting up of small scale fisheries combined with nutrition uh, awareness in fact in our program in orissa the nutrition awareness program uh has been started off with uh, you know uh, nutrition warriors uh, so this is something which has really picked up in orissa and we have been continuing to do that uh, awareness uh, <clears throat> mssr has been promoting nutrition sensitive programs for more than two decades through establishing access to nutri rich foods by specific production systems namely farming systems integrated with livestock poultry and fishes and msr have also led a huge program called uh, lansa that is leveraging agriculture for nutrition in south asia uh, from 12 2012 to 18 with support from what we now call today as uk otherwise we used to call as dfid uh, this study which uh, we undertook from 2013 to 18 uh, in cluster of villages in koraput and orissa in orissa and wardha district in uh, vidarbha region of maharashtra provided evidence for practicing nutrition sensitive farming in different agroecological zones it primarily believes that diversity of crops on farm will increase diversity of food on plate so we believe that higher the diversity of foods on the farm will increase the diversity on the plate so which means higher diversity on uh, plate means higher or improved nutrition so msrf took this advocacy to fsn approach at the grassroots development officials at the village and district level and state and also at the national level initial focus was primarily in two states uh, maharashtra and odisha and later we moved on to andhra pradesh and bihar and the recommendation of introducing nutrition sensitive agriculture elements in agriculture policies of these states have been made following policy analysis of current agriculture policies in these states we also promote nutrition gardens consisting of all four groups of fruits vegetables etc in the field areas primarily aiming at holistic nutrition to families through kitchen gardens we have also developed four uh, mega uh, i would say uh, nutri rich gardens uh, in four different places which is now a model for other people and in fact the entire households will contribute to improve quality of diet based on this nutri gardens that we have developed and presence of nutrition gardens in school campus and edu other educational institutions have improved understanding of the school children on nutrition and also growing of different vegetables and importance of consuming them the knowledge carried by children to their homes will have positive spillover effect i think this is very very critical this has also been uh you know experimented elsewhere in other programs where children telling the parents that how nutrition is important uh, will become an important issue at the uh, local level they not only 
uh, tell their parents how to improve their nutrition, but also their peer groups, which will have a spillover effect. Uh, a collaboration of world fish uh, has a great opportunity to bring inclusion of aquatic foods in social safety programs of nutrition in a big way. Uh, that's at least uh, what considers uh, 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 our foundation considers. We use this as an opportunity to test pilots and evolve models of inclusion of aquatic products, ICDS, and ICDS means Integrated Child uh, Development Scheme, and also MDMS, which is Midday uh, Meals uh, Schemes that targets women and children particularly. This brings dietary diversity with aquatic products among different sections of the society. It's important steps in addressing malnutrition through food-based approach. Among animal source foods, I think fish is the most nutritious and also in terms of its footprint, uh, our carbon footprint, it is very, very least. So this is something that we have to drive home at various uh, forums that this is uh, in terms of uh, uh, animal foods, fish is, uh, has less uh, you know, <clears throat> carbon footprints. And the inclusion of adequate fo uh, aquatic foods, particularly in social uh, programs and livelihood opportunities for farmers. I think much of the uh, work that has been done in Warisa has already been told, and that's why I'm not repeating them, but particularly MSSRF has been promoting fish production in farm ponds in Koraput and other areas. And we are also working in other areas uh, such as uh, Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh and Kerala, where we are promoting all the fish production, uh, not only fish production, but also looking at how fish can be consumed with better nutrition aspects. New evidence shows that fish consumption is associated with addressing issues of stunting due to better overall health. It is found that fish is a highly nutritious food, uh, particularly for pregnating and uh, pregnant and lactating women. Uh, so to sum up, uh, we are greatly benefited from the association with World Fish, wherein MSSR helped promote other programs in the issue of nutrition and health apart from farming system for nutrition. Once again, I thank all the office bearers of uh, World Fish for this opportunity, government of Marissa, government of India, and other central institutes of fisheries for uh, involving us, uh, uh, the, our foundation, and it is, has been excellent uh, experience for us to promote fisheries and also promote other nutrition systems that we have been doing in the past. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Murad. It's always wonderful um, when you're working with partners who speak sort of a similar language when it comes to nutrition sensitive approaches and are just as much, you know, strong advocates of, of this important mm -hmm. approaches. Um, next, I will move on to our next speaker, uh, Mr. Prasad, who is the Commissioner, Secretary of the Fisheries and the Animal Resources Development Department of the Government of Indonesia. Welcome, Mr. Prasad. Thank you, uh, Ms. Tana, and I hope I'm audible. Yes, we can hear you and we can see you as well. Yeah, uh, uh, just let me. Yeah, thank you all. Uh, uh, Dr. Gareth uh, Johnston, uh, Director General of World Fish, uh, uh, Ms. Ramona from the USAID, uh, Dr. Shakuntala Tilsit, uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Aravind Agarwal, uh, the Director of uh, the Women and Child Development, and the Women and Child Development Department, uh, Dr. J.K. Uh, uh, Jenna, uh, DDG of uh, ICR Fisheries, uh, Dr. Murli uh, and all the participants who are joining from in both in India and abroad. Uh, welcome all of you uh, for this uh, USA uh, Project Closure Workshop. Uh, first of all, let me congratulate uh, Dr. Shakundala Tilsit uh, for uh, winning uh, this year's uh, Wallfish uh, Prize uh, uh, for your uh, enduring efforts in uh, popularizing uh, nutrition sensitive uh, carpmola polyculture and uh, consumption of uh, small fish uh, for nutritional gains. Uh, so, congratulations, uh, Dr. Shakuntala, and also congratulations to Wallfish uh, for this uh, huge recognition. Uh, back here in Odisha, you know, we are the fourth uh, largest uh, fish producing state uh, in the country. 
uh, and approximately we uh, produce currently around uh, 850,000 uh, tons of uh, fish uh, each year uh, and it's growing exponentially. Uh, in fact, uh, the demand for fish is also very high in Odisha. We, uh, we have a per capita consumption of approximately around uh, 16 kilograms uh, per year, which is much uh, higher than the national uh, average. Uh, but still, you know, the demand is very high. We also import uh, around uh, 50,000 uh, metric tons of uh, fish uh, uh, each year. Uh, and also we export uh, almost around 200,000 uh, tons of fish, both uh, within the state, uh, within the country and also abroad. Uh, uh, the fishing sector has been growing uh, very rapidly. In the last five years, uh, we have had uh, a remarkable growth of a rate of approximately 12 percentage uh, per annum. Uh, and uh, the aquaculture as a sector uh, has an important opportunity uh, for the farmers, uh, for uh, both in terms of multiplying their incomes, uh, for nutritional security, and uh, you know, as an overall uh, uh, platform uh, and a portfolio for uh, rural development. Uh, we've had uh, technical collaborations by the Department of uh, Fisheries and uh, Animal Resources Department uh, where, uh, of the state government with World Fish. Uh, we started way back in 2016. Uh, and I think uh, for the last uh, more than five years, uh, we've had a very active and uh, good technical partnership uh, with the World Fish uh, uh, for developing and you know putting a vision forward uh, for the entire fishery and aquaculture sector uh, in the state. And I was really you know um, thank uh, the partnership which we are having with World Fish, both uh, Dr. Gareth and also the team headed here by Arun, uh, Dr. Mohan back in Penang, and I think the entire team. It's been a really, uh, a, a really a good partnership, and uh, which which we have actually nurtured the last uh, five to six years uh, period. Uh, in fact, the World Fish has uh, primarily been, you know, uh, giving a good focus on the policy initiatives uh, and the and bringing in very good strategic focus as to where we should take the the inland fishery sector. Uh, which are the areas to invest, uh, uh, improving uh, the productivity. Uh, we also you know, uh, uh, have uh, uh, strategies in terms of self-sufficiency uh, of the entire fish production uh, for both for nutrition security uh, and for bringing in incomes, job opportunities, uh, attract uh, private investments in the fishery sector and uh, Women empowerment, build capacities of various stakeholders. So it's been a good, it's been a range of areas in which uh, Wallfish has the Wallfish and the and the department were able to partnership in the last five years. Uh, and uh, uh, some of the new transformation in areas in which we have been working with the Wallfish is actually to put in uh, good production and a very sustainable model in terms of cage culture, uh, the reservoir cage culture practices how environmentally safe uh, cage culture practices can be taken up, uh, how to uh, sustainably expand uh, the, the freshwater aquaculture portfolio in the state. Uh, so those are the things which uh, we've been working with the world fish. Uh, and uh, uh, several of the innovative uh, fisheries technologies and uh, systems have been introduced uh, and is being replicated. Uh, we've also worked in partnership with many of the other departments uh, in the government uh, as uh, Dr. Arun and my colleague uh, and Mr. Agarwal, uh, the director of the Women and Child Development was mentioning earlier, uh, convergence of various departments in terms of uh, both for uh, putting in fish and fish farming uh, as a community level activity for supporting small farmers and also to bring in entrepreneurs and uh, entrepreneurs into the stream uh, of, of fish farming. We are putting into convergence almost around a large number of community tanks uh, into productive uh, freshwater aquaculture. And these are done through the women self help groups uh, at the village level, uh, which has uh, had significant development impacts uh, in terms of sustainable food, uh, food production and women empowerment because you know they bring a lot of good returns back to the 
uh, uh, to, to the woman folk. And so also the nutritional gains which they bring in family. Uh, each year we bring in around 2,000 to 3,000 women self-help groups. Uh, they, bring, uh, they, they, they auction, they lease out the big community ponds in the villages and they take up scientific uh, aquaculture. Uh, in Odisha, we have approximately around uh, 50,000 uh, hectares of uh, community ponds and we have a potential of uh, putting in almost around 100,000 uh, tons of uh, uh, fish uh, produced through these uh, self-help groups, uh, which, which also includes both the carps and also the mola, and which, have, uh, which, can have, which have a potential of anywhere uh, from around uh, 200 million dollars uh, worth of uh, produce which can be which, which is a potential and uh, probably around 64,000 women self help groups can be brought to this fold. So we are, we in the state are actually you know leading into a policy in which all the community ponds will will eventually uh, be given to the women self help groups uh, for for good uh, aquaculture practices uh, going forward. Uh, We've also de uh, decided to promote uh, the carp, or the mola polyculture, the small fish uh, culture uh, in agriculture farm ponds, which are dug across the state uh, under various schemes which we have uh, under normal agriculture practices. Uh, so uh, we uh, plan to put in almost around 10,000 uh, farm ponds uh, to be covered over a, a period of uh, next uh, this year. Uh, and uh, though we have two schemes, we are bringing uh, several thousand hectares of unused and underutilized ponds across uh, the state. Uh, and uh, so this decentralized strategy of fish production would also increase the availability, uh, the accessibility and the affordability of uh, fresh and nutritious fish uh, to the community and to people, including the large tribal communities and vulnerable societies which we have in the state. Uh, the state government has taken up a very pioneering step uh, of introducing uh, fish uh, as a nutrition component in the integrated child development scheme. We have the Angan body network in the state, which provides uh, supplementary nutrition uh, program by the Women and Child Development Department. And that's been a very important step for the first time we have been introducing the fish, uh, which is quite a transformational change uh, in terms of nutritional status for the small children. Uh, so we in the fishery department, we are really, really excited with this uh, income opportunity for this program that creates for the fisherwoman uh, in the coastal areas for setting up of fish drying and uh, processing uh, business. Uh, the department is also be, uh, working close coordination with other partner departments like the Department of Mission Shakti, the Department of Medium, Small and uh, uh, Enterprises. Uh, for taking up various uh, programs in terms of value addition and processing of fish. Uh, so once again, uh, I thank you all the partners, especially the USAID and the World Fish and all the other partners who have been involved with this uh, piloting initiative of uh, nutrition sensitive fisheries technology. And uh, I hope our collaboration uh, with all the partners uh, keep continuing, and especially with all the uh, we, uh, the stakeholders uh, who are involved with this project. Uh, so thanks again, thanks to all the partners uh, for uh, for this uh, initiative, and uh, looking forward to uh, for a greater partnership in the future. Thank you all. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Prasad. Uh, well said, I guess, on the partnership, but also. Um, you know, it's really exciting to hear also the uh, work that's been going on with regards to really empowering women um, in the fishery sectors at World Fish with several of our scientists who actually also do research on gender work um, in our organizations. We always sort of say that women are sort of the invisible heroes in the aquatic uh, food sector. And so it's always wonderful to sort of pursue this kind of joint partnerships and initiatives that serve to elevate um, that visibility of women and empower women to kind of play that proactive role um, in, in, the, in the sector. So thank you for, for sharing those um, insights with us. And now I have the distinct pleasure of introducing you to our next speaker, uh, Mr. Vijay Gupta, Dr. Vijay Gupta, who is the former Assistant Director General of World Fish 
and who in 2005 was also the World Food Prize laureate for his exceptional achievement in enriching the diets and livelihoods of some of the world's most vulnerable through the development of low-cost aquaculture practices and also contributing to the economic and social empowerment of millions of women and men in poor and rural areas across India. Many people refer to him as the primary architect of the Blue Revolution in Asia and around the globe. So um, I have the distinct pleasure to introduce you today to Dr. Gupta, who I know has been a close mentor to uh, the project team and been following the, the work and progress that the project and partners have been uh, doing. So it's really, really interesting for you today, uh, Dr. Gupta. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tana, for the introduction. It's really a pleasure to be a part of this work closing workshop. I would like to thank the Director General for inviting me to this workshop. And also I'd like to congratulate uh, uh, the World Fish Center, the various departments and agencies in the Odisha government, and a number of ICR institutes who have been partners in this uh, pro project implementation for the excellent results that has been shown. So this actually, when I was hearing uh, from Arun, who used to meet me from time to time to uh, brief me on the progress of the project, and also hearing from uh, Arun and other people now what the project in Varisa has been made, I think this is a joint uh, effort of all the institutions, the brains and the hands put together. The world leader like the World Fish Center, the ICR institution, and the Varisa government has taken a very keen interest in uh, undertaking the scientific uh, knowledge and implementing in this one. All these and self-help groups and all these things have very much helped, I think, in uh, targeting the population and improving their nutrition security. So I think there's, a, in fact, uh, when I was thinking back, you know, I have been in this fishery sector for the last 50 years. And when I see about 20, 30 years back, the fish and aquatic products were not given any importance in the nutritional and food security discussions at all. And in fact, it is the efforts of the uh, agencies like the World Fish Center, which have been pushing the uh, aquatic resources, what they could do in keeping up the nutrition security of the lay, uh, poor people in the developing countries. I want to thank again the World Fish Center uh, for all its efforts. Now, this actually dialogue after hearing this project, it takes me back 30 years back in my memory lane when I started working with the, the World Fish Center way back in 1989 in Bangladesh, when we started uh, innovating, implementing small scale aquaculture practices that could be sustained by the poor and less resourced farmers in the rural areas. And especially at that time, the World Fish Center and the project was focusing on women. At that time, because of various religious reasons and other things, women were not coming into the field and they were not able to add any income or food to the household. So by involving this woman in the small scale aquaculture, the project was able to do a tremendous difference both in the uh, income of the households, nutrition of the household, and more importantly, that has led to the empowerment of the woman. So looking at that one, I think it is an excellent project that has been implemented now. And Dr. Kirsten, again, congratulations for uh, winning the award Food Prize this year. I think, again, this shows that fish is an important part of the food security system by winning this project. Now, Dr. Shrikantala Kirsten and her group has added one more component. In the earlier, we, everyone has been talking about increasing the production, increasing the profit and things like that. But Dr. Shikuntala and her group has given a new dimension to aquaculture and fishery sector in terms of the nutrition sensitive aquaculture or nutrition sensitive fish in the diets of the poor people for their better health. Once again, thanks to Dr. Shikuntala and uh, uh, our group. Now, see, looking at these, the success of the project in being implemented in the Orissa state, which I'm sure the Orissa government with the support of the other agencies would like to scale it up to more districts and more self-help groups and more population. But I don't think World Fish should restrict itself and with ICR and the government have support, these technologies and these 
program should in fact expand to the other states in not only in india but also to many developing countries where the fish can make any a uh, lot of difference in the nutrition and food security not only that also in the livelihood security of these operations one more thing i find farmer to what i did in bangladesh way back in 1989 with world fish center and this project the funding agency is the usaid at that time also usaid take a lot of interest and give funding to the world fish center to do the work in bangladesh and some other countries and now i am also glad that again usaid is give providing support to the world fish center in implementing this project and we have been, we have been uh, proactive in <coughs> helping the poor in improving their nutrition security so i am i am sure this program will expand much bigger uh, scale in orissa not only in orissa but other states of the country and also in the many developing countries where this model can be translated and implemented in those countries and again i would like to thank uh, government of orissa which has taken keen interest in implementing this project i am sure without their support the project would have not been at all uh, successful and also the icr institutions we have joined their hands together with all these people i think this is a, when we put all our brains and hands together i don't think there is anything impossible that, that could be achieved i would wish the project uh, better success uh, more ex more expanded in india and in other countries thank you very much for giving me this operation Thank you so much, Dr. Gupta. Um, and there you have it, you know, from one World Food Prize winner to another, it's such a wonderful um, to hear this, or a sense of collegiality and recognition um, and, and sort of the interconnection as well and the way that, you know, you know the work has kind of built on from, you know, the, the researchers uh, at Worldfish have carried on and built on from, you know, your work, Dr. Gupta. So it's, it's really, really wonderful. And I think personally for me, this is such a highlight to be able to introduce two World Food Prize winners in one day. So this is a this is really wonderful. Okay, so we are fast approaching the end of the workshop. Uh, but I would like to invite now the Director General of World Fish, Dr. Gareth Johnson, to give his concluding remarks and reflections um, uh, to this workshop. Over to you, Dr. Johnson. Thank you. Thank you, Tana. And uh, what a wonderful discussion. I know we've gone over a little bit of time, but I found it really stimulating uh, hearing the different reflections and, uh, and comments, and they're all noted. I'm making notes down here, so really, really fabulous. And, and as, uh, as Tana has reflected and others have, it's fantastic to be in a, a meeting where there's two World Fish World Food Prize laureates, Dr. Gupta and Dr. Tilstead with us. It's a truly um, amazing uh, feeling to have such, uh, such an awe-inspiring scientist and, their, and, and seeing the result of their work. Dr. Gupta worked on tilapia and the small-scale aquaculture, as he mentioned, is enriching the diets and livelihoods of the world's most impoverished families. Whilst Dr. Tilstead has been pioneering, pioneering work on nutrition-sensitive approaches to aquatic food systems and really cementing aquatic foods as a superfood. And it was good to hear about nutrition warriors and, and, and uh, obviously proponents of superfood, nutrition superfood, for the nutrition and health of women, particularly women and children. You know, as Director General of Wellfish, this is probably one of the best parts of my job, you know, listening and joining partners to reflect on the impact of our research and our in innovations that have you know, materialized in this project. And the project and issue is really a special one. It's been a long journey um, in which we've formed strong and innovative partnerships. And I think it's a really core element is those partnerships from national to state levels and into the communities. Together, we've built the evidence on the life-changing opportunities aquatic foods have for healthy people and sustainable planet. Through support from our funder, USAID, and I really appreciate the support and the, and the partnership that that, uh, that uh, they've provided together with the Fisheries and Animal Resources and Development Department, the Department of Women and Child Development and Mission Shakti, and the Central Institute of Fisheries Technology, and many, many others. We have successfully improved the availability, accessibility, and consumption of nutritious fish whilst boosting the livelihoods 
of women and the health of children. So this success comes by applying this nutrition sensitive approach to aquatic food systems, which really puts nutrition and health outcomes at the center. And by working at multiple entry, entries of the food system, so from production, and not only just focusing on production, but looking at the distribution and also the consumption elements of the food system. We have shown aquatic foods as a really game-changing solution in our bid to achieve these global goals. Through the project, and I fondly remember the MOU signing last year, and also in, uh, welcoming uh, representatives of the government of Odisha to, to World Fish in Malaysia, we've helped to empower women to take up nutrition-sensitive fish farming, lead the production of hygienic and safe solar dried fish, and find economic opportunities while improving household nutrition. And together we've shown, um, we've shown that, um, that fish and fish-based products can be safe. I think it's really important. It was a question that we were asked that we think they're going to be safe and they'll be healthy animal source food when included in these large scale feeding programs. And these fish-based products, each designed with their target population in mind is really critical. Adding essential micronutrients, including iron, zinc, calcium to women and children's diet as well as essential fatty acids. This work has truly revolutionized the fight against malnutrition in Odisha. With the first pilot due to end in September this year, I'm confident we will have the evidence to expand this program through the state, um, perhaps as also Dr. Gupta highlighted to other states, because Odisha is a shining example to others across India and the world of the benefits of women-centric policies have for improving health and livelihoods. As much as aquatic foods are a game changer solution here, the partnerships across different government departments and technical institutions are another major game changer. We've been hearing from different partners and different parts of the government, all saying that this collaboration has been really valuable. The Department of Fisheries and the Department of Women and Child Development work together to encourage the supply and consumption of fish. This model of interdepartmental co uh, cooperation is really key, very critical. Another key to success was the government's partnership with technical organizations to bridge technical gaps and sustain government programs to achieve impacts at scale. So that collaboration, national and state, really important. At Wellfish, we're really proud to be a key partner providing this technical support that convening also and bringing together through a dishes fisheries policy, so making lasting changes. These approaches are really relevant to many other states in India and in fact around the world, as I mentioned. I would like to really extend a warm and grateful thank you to USAID India for its support to the Wellfish led project and for providing the funding to carry out this six month feeding pilot program. Adisha is a real model and example for well fish and the one CGIR. I'm sure many people have heard about the reform CGIR and this will be an important example to showcase in the one CGIR and others and how to scale innovations and technologies. It is an example how adaption can be led through strong partnerships between government departments, development funders and partners, that really important scale landscape to make things happen. It is this success that I look to replicate across World Fish Initiatives in Asia and in Africa, learning from what we have done together in uh, Odisha. Last year, um, you may be aware that World Fish launched our 2030 research and innovation strategy. Please visit the website. It's called Aquatic Foods for Healthy People and Planet. You know, and it's it, in the, the strategy was inspired by stories like Odisha's that take a food systems approach, this holistic approach by bringing multi-sector partners together to work from production through to consumption. And Wellfish and myself, I see it, State of Odisha and India as our long-term partners. We're in for the long game. Uh, we're not interested in just small short-term gains or into the long game. And I'm very pleased that we continue to strengthen partnership with the federal government of India and the Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Daring, and also with the India Council 
of agricultural research. I, I hear Dr. Jana very much. Quality fish for all, forever. Very, very important. So what is, has been done with states of a dish can be shared with other states. So fish and aquatic foods become part of a vibrant industry. As your prime minister said, a sunrise sector supporting livelihoods and food security while ensuring environmental sustainability. The results here are showing the world the importance of fish and other aquatic foods, which I haven't touched on, crustaceans and all sorts, sea, it's algae and seaweeds for nutrition and health. And I look forward to continuing our work and taking the lessons learned here to the world. And before I finish and hand back to Tana, can I also send my thoughts to the people of Addish in India in coping with and recovering from COVID-19 pandemic. My thoughts are with you and I hope many of you stay safe and well. Thank you. Over to you, Tana. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Johnson, for these concluding thoughts. We have come um, at the end of our workshop today. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of our partners and speakers at today's event and also the World Fish Research and Communications and Marketing team who have been working tirelessly behind the scenes to bring all of us here together. This event marks an important milestone which should all celebrate as we work together to build this vibrant space for innovative partnerships and solutions to shape a shared vision and roadmap for transformational change with aquatic foods in Odisha. We look forward to building and strengthening our partnership with many of you in the future. Wishing you a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Thank you.